Valorant Challengers. Oh, a great start, great start. Valorant Challengers, North America Stage 1. We're already on week four, day two. It's crazy how fast the time has flown. And for some of these teams, things are just going to be ramping up because every match counts. I can't wait to get headed into the action for today. My name's Sierra Dawn, but of course, I won't be here alone. I have two wonderful co-casters, two wonderful analysts by my side. I got Lemon Kiwi. I got Van Silly. Vans, I like the hat. Thanks, man. I, I love chickens. I hope no one can read, but on. I didn't bring my hat. If I keep if I keep looking up like this, no one will ever know. Oh, no, mm -hmm. Perfect, perfect, wonderful. Kiwi, how are you doing today, friend? <laughs> Good. Um, you know, when I was talking to fans about wardrobe, we both said we were gonna wear black, and I thought he meant something other than a black T-shirt. So we're we're working on it. Yeah, we're working on it. Yeah, you know, like uh, yeah, it's been it's been it's been crazy busy, you know. But I'll, overall, still pretty happy. <laughs> we still have a crazy week of uh, of North American challengers as well. I I heard like rumors that maybe we're gonna have a bunch of like two zeros this week, but I beg to differ with today's games. I. It'll be interesting to see. I think um, we're still at a really big discovery point for challengers, which is mm. quite interesting considering how far along it's been so far. Yep. So when we look at the matches, especially after like the episodes that happened last week across the board, I'm really intrigued with how they're going to be going down because I don't I think as even as we go into a match and we kind of have one expectation, Kiwi, I mean, we're still getting surprised at points. Yeah, I I. I agree with Vance that it it's giving 2-0 vibes, but expect the unexpected. I think there are some teams <laughs> at the bottom that are making their way up. Like Turtle Troop story has been incredible. The fact that Thinking Men took a game off of Moy Shopify, that's going to be a big storyline for our first match. Mm -hmm. uh, they're on the come up. I don't think relegation in that group is going to be as obvious as we think. And Moist is a beatable team. So I think uh, as much as everyone feels comfortable in their predictions for this week, I'm not so much. <laughs> well, especially when we're talking about like relegation and stuff too. Let's look at the standings and let's look at these teams and whereabouts they fall. I think too, when we looked at the beginning of the season, that there was definitely a couple of these teams that was quite kind of obvious with whereabouts they're going to be standing at the mm -hmm. end of it all too and we're looking at a couple of our power teams coming out here we're looking at teams like you know our mxs we're looking at is them and etc so it's not too surprising that they're going to be along the tops and you know what we're going to save it till the end of show to actually go through that <laughs> standings we're just wanting to hop right into today's action to start talking about our first match with that as mine, Kiwi, you're talking about MXS. That is going to be the first team that we're going to be peeping an eye on for today's match, going up against TWT, later on Oxygen, going up against YFP. So we definitely have a stacked day ahead of us. Oh, man, these have been some good matches. The 2-0 from Turtle Troop over TSM ruined my prediction. Actually, I'm 0-2 <laughs> on that week. I'm not going to lie. I thought Glazers were going to be able to contend a bit better against SAD, but TSM losing 2-0 and kind of choking against Turtle Troop was a big surprise to me, Vance. Yeah, I'm just going to go along with the storyline that I'm uh, that I'm a jigster when it comes down to predictions, right? Because if you're following the night socials every single week, if I'm going to predict against GMD, he's going to take it personally then they win <laughs> if i do the same thing as we did for turtle troop they're gonna win so this time i had no choice i had to predict one and unfortunately the jinx came on over to gmd although that being said i think it tells a lot about you know we didn't have a chance to look at the standings and whatnot but the, the two zero that we have from ttr over tsm just comes to show how when you're outside of that top three that everybody's been talking about again everything in that mid pack for that fourth spot or that fifth spot to try to make it into like a a, a guaranteed mid-season cup it's still up to up for grabs for any single one of these organizations or these free agent teams which is super nice to see at this point uh that the competition continues to be very very strong and i I think you mentioned it at the beginning of the uh at the top of show here where mxs seems a little bit beatable uh when you witness what they played and how they played last week against thinking men like even if thinking men are winless so far this season this split it's not necessarily series that on paper it's like oh well they're just gonna be on five at the beginning they it was very close games in series overall when they're playing these games against other teams well we're talking about MXS. Let's dive a little bit further into this. Of course, they're going to be the first team that we're seeing today going up against TWT. And you said it really, really well. This core of five, they're definitely not an unbeatable team. This mm. is a very strong team. Do not get me wrong. Do not discount that. But I think 
what we've gotten to see so far out of this out of them this split lemon there's so much more i think they can achieve and there's just they're holding back a little bit i feel like we haven't seen the final form yeah i think this team has so much ahead of them although they have achieved so much already like they still are number one in their group a reminder of just the big names on the, this roster from the moist moguls of brock and flyo with the shopify rebellion half of mata and vic the big outlier the guy i'm really interested in actually is odashima or also called odorous um he played sentinel and open qualifier one and kind of is the guy who doesn't fit in on this roster in terms of like the resumes and experience, but he didn't make challengers proper um, last year and didn't even make challengers since 2021, but was a coach for so many months, comes in as a player when Thief uh, stepped off this roster, but he actually used to team with Neptune from TWT, Odashima and Neptune. Yes, former teammates facing off. I think this match is going to mean a lot to both these guys. Yeah, and when you're mentioning here on paper that they... Do, do look beatable or they they have some things that they could still work on i think the biggest thing is actually trying to win pistol rounds at this point too when you're looking at that <laughs> roster as well right but if not if anything one thing that's good looking at the mxx roster is that you know they got slapped last week uh, against thinking man on their map pick on split i think it was like a 13 to 3 scoreline when you're first watching this game and you're like what the hell is going on why is that so one-sided at a point is mx has figured out what could they actually do Yet they're still losing pistol rounds and won the series over three maps. So that shows how they have tenacity, resiliency, and they can actually just really perform under pressure. Even that bind game, I, I gotta say again one more time that that series probably should have gone through thinking men. Uh, thinking men, I sound like I'm very <laughs> Quebecer at that point. Hey, thinking men, there uh, they should have uh, <laughs> really won that one, Mozi. No, but they should have won that map on bind if it really didn't come down to like that that key round. I think it was like an. Uh, anti-eco that they are uh, they actually had with like ults and they kind of like played not to lose and from then on mxs was able to spiral back and, and and come back and actually win the series so it comes to show that if you're actually going to give them a little bit of room they're going to take advantage of that and just destroy you right after so that at least uh, gives us a little bit of hope uh, and and confidence to still see mxs as this top three uh, out of the whole pack here over in challengers yeah, there was a couple things kind of happening last week. Um, Dan had spoken to Mata in the post-game interview, and Mata had spoken about the fact that over on Split, it just it kind of wasn't going well. The team wasn't listening to each other. They weren't listening to the game plan. And he did also give credit to Thinking Men, or as Vance would put it, um, Thinking Men, um, for how they played as well in that series. So, you know, the two kind of things. But talking a little bit more about Mata, when we're looking back at last week's series, he was someone that I looked to throughout the first all the series. Even the first game where nobody really got to do too much, he was still kind of trying. He he got an ace for the like their first round win here, and then really in the next two maps, Lemon was really really able to pop off. And I think too, when you have this powerhouse of a player who's been doing well the entire split as well, that if Mata is unlocked, that it's always going to be a really really dangerous time for the opposing team. Yeah, and this is going to be a great match for Mata. He's had an incredible raise and has just been that consistent Canadian that we love <laughs> to see on the roster, okay? And if you look at the other side, Will, the, the on the unfortunate Canadian side, this is going to be a good matchup for Mata because Will ended last week on a low note, really struggled, had eight first deaths in a row, low damage per round, but Mata had an explosive last week, so I wonder how... This is going to line up for this match. Will Will be able to bounce back, or is Mata just going to crush him? Yeah, just, just uh, Mata sorry to, to, to cut you as well. No, go for I, it. I, I feel like today I just I'm just going to just throw things off and just cut you all the time this year. I feel like doing that today. Is that man. okay? <laughs> hey, stop talking. I'm talking right now. I don't now. think I have a but... choice here at this point, man. <laughs> Honestly, just go for it. <laughs> Joke, jokes oh aside, sorry with that, but no, I, I do agree with what um, what uh, we were saying here, Lemon Kiwi, about about Mata. Uh, he definitely has found a real form going into this season uh, into this year as well where you know very similar storylines if you're going into the head-to-head -head and comparing with will for example they almost went through that same type of conversation where like ah, it's like an off day one day he's going to be on one day he's going to be off and then you really want to find more consistency in that and in, in, in your store duelist and mata definitely is able to bring that to the table right now for mxs
And now we need to start looking at the other side because, Kiwi, you were already talking about the comparison mm. between Mata and Will here. So talking a little bit about, more about TWT, and I even want to take it a step back and kind of talk about how the team has been doing because this team, when we're talking about the powerhouses of the league, they're not quite there, but they are in kind of like that next spot. I think there is a gap here, and I'd be intrigued mm. to see how much of that map they can kind of make out today because looking at this roster of five i mean this is definitely a really really strong roster but again vans when we're talking about mxs i feel like they're kind of just holding back a little bit for together we are terrific i feel like they have been as well yeah and together to together we're terrific i feel like they're holding themselves back in terms of trying to add a little bit more of that synergy yes we want to maybe a harp on wills uh, a little bit worse for wear performances uh, against oxg last week but i think it shows a lot to what OX oxg was able to bring to the table on defense where they were really strong on their strongholds on ascent but also at the same time it you're at your you need to add a little bit more synergy in terms of being able to activate will at that point right because if your responsibility is not only to create space but let's say for example you have to dash in and close the door you're going to cloud burst and dash in there and for you to come out of that cloud burst safe in that 3.5 second time window that you currently have is what type of flash is going to come out of that what type of smokes is going to help will to get out of car uh to get out of that cloud burst and isolate 1v1s so it's not only on the responsibility of will at that point but you need a little bit more from your teammates to add a little bit more of that teamwork to be like okay i got the pop flash for you you could get out to that one you could at least get one for your troubles and we'll be out there with uh with you so that we could at least trade and take advantage of that we unfortunately didn't see that from that scoreline of course against uh the oxg game last week but hopefully this is something that they uh, cleaned up against an MXS team where, like I said, it's not going to be an easy one, right? You're playing from one top three to a next top three, so it's uh, yeah. you're, 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 they're, you're, they're, your stacks are against you. They, they definitely have their work cut out for them, but I, I'm hoping that you know, pressure makes diamonds, yada yada, that <laughs> hopefully we can see something a bit better coming out for this week. And I think it's about time to get uh, underway with this. So let's head over to our map select and see where this first match of today is going to be taking us especially too when we get to see last week there was that loss coming out for mxs over on split they picked that last week so vans the fact that we're not going to see it as their first pick of the week and instead taking us to breeze i'm not surprised by yeah this is this is nice though at least that you're still going to float split no matter what here for mxs so the the map pool overall is still going to favor mxs uh, when you're looking at this because you pretty much have any type of first map in your favor with the map that you have what i mean by that is that together we're terrific no matter what is going to ban icebox first as their as their main perma ban so it gives you a lot of room to really figure out what where you want to take this first i like that we're going to breeze because that's where mata had a great performance uh last week and where you're starting to see mx has come back in that game against thinking man but it's also a map where uh mummy looked very good playing a sentinel role as a cypher on that map so i'm expecting that you know you're just going to dip your toes in the sand dip your toes in the water no pun intended it and just roll it out and get comfortable for the rest of the series so i like that we're starting off on breeze yeah breeze is going to be a clash of styles in my opinion and the one person that i really want to to set up for success is twt is neptune um this team twt prefers to play a lot of ko as their main initiator more than most teams and if we're seeing will suffer from so many first deaths you're gonna naturally see that stat with jets who dash in and create those opportunities but it's how you convert those chances that so i want to see neptune and will really sync up on the dash the the pop flash whatever it is on breeze they were at twt were successful in their first week against core on breeze 13 to 9 very respectable score on the other side the clash of style here would be the double initiator mm. versus only the single moist shopify like the sova and the ko so i'm wondering if that offense is going to look that much stronger on the moist shopify side or really how the double controller from twt can try to slow that down and how they can deal with that pace Especially the styles and as well what the teams have been able to learn going kind of into this next week. I don't think I'm expecting too many changes how they like to be playing the game on a agent level. Mm. But considering that Mata had spoke of the communication difficulties and of course with TWT didn't get a chance to talk to them. But something's got to give, right? Because mm. um, the loss that they had, that isn't something that could be continuing. So I'd be more intrigued, Vance, heading into this. 
where we're going to start seeing those little differences um, for the play style and how they're grouped up. Yeah, and, and that's where it hurts most, right? When you actually, you know, lost a, a very big lead uh, or a big loss that you suffered rather against your opponents last week over at OXG for together we're terrific. I think it's it's gonna go down to a lot of good things by adding this Astra. If you're talking about that, there's not gonna be any changes. There's still good value that you're able to pull out with the Astra that's being played by Pancakes. They're still able to disrupt a little bit more towards that map. But I do agree with Lemon Kiwi. You need a little bit more of that synergy between both Will and uh, the KO being Neptune at that point. But thankfully on a map like Breeze, you have the Viper that could be the extra obstacle. So those flashes are not only to try to get Will out of dodge, but also maybe to try to get the extra value by pop flashing over your Viper walls around the concussions that's being held out here by pancakes and hopefully will can capitalize on a couple of those uh swarmed and, and overwhelmed players on the defense hopefully so we'll have to see if it can happen but now our agent select is ready so it's time to head in to breeze i'll see you two later cool thanks sierra cool. so we kind of cool <laughs> time cool. for breeze hey. double initiator versus double control oh yeah double controller yeah. as uh they played previously yeah exactly that's that's where nothing really changes from from the compositions that you know that was expected from sierra that you've mentioned here before we got into this game and again it gives us a little bit of room to to talk a little bit more about this type of uh execution that you could do for together we're terrific as they're starting off on the attack again try to see where pancakes is gonna is going to put these stars in the great spots i think you remember in week number one he had great concusses i was thrown on top of the staircase and that staircase by the door is a pivotal point from somebody trying to watch over the viper wall when you're executing towards the site right so that's the extra piece of util where recon dart is not going to do as much or you're hoping that the yellow drone is going to get that ping on the staircase but if it gets broken at the beginning when you're trying to when you're trying to scout across or you're trying to drone across then it gives you a little bit less utility to really try to suffocate your opponents on the defensive side right so uh, i like that i like what the reason why they have this astra on the side of pancakes and for the rest of together were terrific but they they had a great game in that week number one uh on this very map and hopefully they continue that forward but when you've now now that we're already at week number four you kind of like just kind of know how these teams are going to play it right so you're min maxing pretty much against the, uh, both of them yeah it, and this is interesting that this is Moist Shopify's choice of map. Actually, every week they, they've picked something different. Week mm. one, it was Lotus. Then it was Bind. It was Split. Now it's Breeze. And they just have this humongous map pool where whether it's, well, we're just choosing this based on our opponent's weaknesses, which I wouldn't say this is TWT's really, yeah. weakness yeah. because Mame, I think, is one of the best players on TWT. And his main role, what he is most comfortable on is Cypher, which is such a pivotal agent to play on the B site. He's going to have help of his friend. But for now, we watch TWT head over to A, and they've already been revealed. Yeah, maybe they forgot to break darts too, and a late knife came out as well in the, at the bottom of the middle, so... MXS has a really good idea of the pressure that TWT is trying to bring out towards the A-holes, which is why Without you have this fight rotate. You have Odashima that's going to watch it with the ghost. Shark are getting ready at the ready once the switch gets back. And here's a crossfire setup. Oh, wow. Down. Already an explosive start. As TWT. Oh, the spike, spike down all the way at the end. Gets recovered there by Will, but Oshima has an angle above him. Some support there from, I think that's Kanpeki on the other side of the pyramid. Last so, Olayo standing. Good patience out of Oshima, but finally gets punished. Mame pushes into him and closes the door. So this seems like a secure location for TWT to play. Yeah, and Vixen a tough spot too. Spike and now planted. they put up the wall to even cover the double doors and the left side. So everybody can really focus on the right. Going to be very difficult for Vic to try to win this and clutch a 1v3. See if he can do it though. He's got the element of surprise. And Will injured. And Pecky basically bleeding out. And there is one headshot for Vic checking the flank, but he doesn't know. There's no one there. And now time is running out. He's putting some shots down and he gets discovered. Wanting to go down with the ship. See how many kills he's taken the process. Just shooting. At the path behind Mame, can Pecky not gonna swing till the last moment and gets the pick? So TWT take pistol. I found it pretty crazy that Ken Pecky held on to that wall for such a long time. Where you saw Will was on an on an island, pretty much left on an island by Orange, where he almost got caught. 
from the rotate that came out from Vic from MXS. And at the same time, instead of really trying to put the wall up and try to cover the spot so that Will can get a safe plant, they decide to play just, okay, I got your back. Ken Pecky's going to swing out. He's going to try to watch the, the angle. And then they got the plant in the end. But overall, it, it was a, a great opportunity for MXS to really set up there as a recon guard ping three. So a nice little scramble towards the end towards uh, TWT to be able to win and capitalize off that pistol. So that's going to put MXS on an eco within this round. They have a super late knife that's being thrown, as you just saw here, blow up towards ca uh, Castle, rather, that didn't really ping anybody in the vicinity. So they'll choose to find information, push down towards cannons, and then with that recon dart, now they have an idea, okay, maybe the hit's going to be happening towards the A site. So as we're pivoting towards that side, TWT is, is reading it perfectly on their end because all they did was hold spawn and rotate over the utility that was being thrown by MXS with both initiators. So they're going to be walking into pretty much an open B site and only a camera that's going to be used for a retake for MXS. With this mid control from MXS too. Are they going to stay on their half of the field? Are they going to cross into no man's land? The outlaw from Mame will keep eyes on the flank that could be coming from mid or really from a so mame will be that anchor pwt make entry into sight using flash and mame is already Good picked off it. too and that was from looking at mid getting an open sight line so what an advantage a twt have just gotten off the back of mame at least i hyped up the right guy but mxs ready for the retake and it is playa heading in but through the bottom side One enemy Brock remaining. and friend were not so successful mxs taking different angles but twt have struck them down already yeah it's gonna be very difficult for brock i mean they've done some uh, armor damage they took neptune down and Hoping to add a little bit more, Brock is going to try to chase down Ken Pecky, who uses the angle to win that fight. So a nice little conversion from the pistol from TWT. But you mentioned it, you guessed up Mame at the beginning. Uh, the reads that they had going into the beginning of the round, the pivot towards the B side, knowing that it was open. It was then for TWT to understand that there was going to be more pressure towards mid or a push coming out from the A site. So keeping your outlaw player far back towards the spawn, and that's two easy pop shots that's being uh, put in the chest of MXS at that point. Yeah. Wow. playing on the nice shields one. anyway or even yes, third we're playing full go. classics rather uh and they weren't going to invest anything at all so they can have full armor this time around except for brock still that's going to be a one shot against mummy's outlaw so they're trying to play semi-quick there's a little bit of pressure happening once again and that's the second time that knife gets info and Recondar gets info. And that hit, I think, two players going up towards the E holes. And MXS already has right four there. players on that side, pressuring down towards mid, watching the holes. So a lot of that action is going to be counted down on the line of sight that you have from Mata on mid at first. Hey, Will, going to come into contact soon. Here's the clash right on the other side of the smoke. And hello, good morning. Shima and TWT just on a tear already. They were discovered early, but MXS only found an L at the end. 1v4, and the round is already over, and it's up to Vic, who's on the other side of the world. Yeah. They anticipated for MXS it was going to be some sort of, like, pop flash and dash coming out maybe from within the smoke outside towards orange when they realized that the Rico North uh, like ping two players there. So like I said, it feels like they were ready for the positioning at that point and they were just trying to, uh, to adapt in a sense that they want to play more aggressively inside that smoke and surprise their opponents instead of playing maybe avoiding the first flash and then capitalizing on Will's dash in the end towards the site. Because as you look at these X's on, the, on, the, on that radar, everybody was still really hyper focused towards mid and the door they were looking to fight that very aggressively but there's less pressure on that defense on that a side so if there's a split happening from twd on a side main and also towards the halls it makes it a lot diff a lot more difficult for you to hold that crossfire on the defensive side and you saw how how that unraveled towards the end all players falling down instantly here from mxs and it's a nice little bonus that's converted here by together we're terrific and it's Kind of the luck that you get when you step into an Astra smoke and you just immediately get first blood off of Otashima and TWT, even though like their presence was known and you would think MXS could play off of that information, play back and watch TWT walk in. TWT won every single engagement in that hallway. And now it was an A hit, a B hit. Where could we going? Where could we be going to now if TWT leaning? 
kind of four to one towards the A site. Mata takes some early hits, gonna respect that one. And MXS gonna play things quiet and slow. It's gonna force the hand out of TWT this time and give them more space. Yeah. And TBT was ready for that again, right? You saw already Neptune was playing anti-flash, looking inside the wall at shops. They're once again holding everything at the spawn, just like the uh, anti-eco that they played in round number two, just trying to figure out where that pressure is going to be coming from. So the pop flash that came out from MXS, easily red, damages Mono down to 46. And now they could still play the clock in their favor. You're still forcing Util out on the hands of the defense. And together were terrific just hurt the owl drone coming out towards the halls back towards the end and they know that there's at least both initiators at this point towards the a site now but as they see no more pressure towards shops they know it's somewhat of a retake play from it says towards the a site so they'll just take it yeah will take the shot into the ankle as he dashes in takes control of the right pyramid watching the back left. of yellow boxes spots on Ashima, but twt putting out good damage from the players of the defense at mid cut twt still need to actually convert a kill damage is nice but corpse is much better but can pecky still go for the play and mata swings around gets punished and makes back each other up they're playing scared on their half but just one relying on the picks but mxs are losing every single one these rounds have been quite one-sided in twt's favor and that's the beauty of playing this double controller where you can see now the viper wall this doesn't have to be uh, a regular wall that that cuts across the a side diagonally in a 45 degree angle that was a straight line up for kempeki like i said when they realized that they weren't getting pressured right now on the a main side they probably think the right side's clear but what's added what are the extra steps added it from that double controller pancakes through a, a smoke that's on the right side of orange that doesn't give a chance for mxs to really set up to, to look down towards uh, the right side of pyramid and at the same time a second smoke went in between pyramids so that if you needed to tot could fall back and you don't get sprayed on the aggression out of mxs so that's the beauty of it right now of this uh, of this aster coming in they can play this retake smoke so you just saw which is going to break a little bit the line of sight of mana trying to set up with the operator on the a side on that pressure and they're guessing correctly once again for TWT. They're just pivoting towards this B-side. They don't know yet that there's an operator in the hands of Mata, yet they still want to avoid in the beginning because they maybe anticipated due to a pop flash that was thrown on that previous round when they had an eco. So uh, I like this pivot across. Neptune has no flash and he's on the other side of the world right now, but TWT ready to overwhelm the two defenders of B, Vic and Brock. Better watch out. And I think Vic senses danger in the air. It says, good luck, Brock. It's all up to you. Will dashes in. TWT just have to deal with some utility on entry. And they're clearing things together. But maybe a multi-kill opportunity for someone like Brock and Vic. There's the double. Down, B. And three removed out of TWT. Finally, a round that MXS can start on a good foot on. And a rotate. 30 for the seconds last left. two or the two players on the mid side is coming towards B and it's going to make it very difficult for it to get there were terrific to get anything done. Maybe it could surprise some kills here and there but with the spike being out in the open towards the ladder last two players are just going to attempt to save their weapons which gives us gives us a chance to see really the pivot that you kind of had from both teams I mean they they kind of understood the, the play right they have the operator watching towards the outside if you have to dash away towards the a site there's at least uh the cypher there that's able to help you you have three players focused on that side you're playing anti KO here. alt as well from MXS on the defense too so that whenever TWT is moving in they have to break utility they have to use a little bit more utility towards the front of the B site and not enough to clear towards the back of the site which then allows for for your last two players for for Brock and I think that was uh uh, Oshima, or excuse me, towards the back, yeah, Vic, sorry, yeah, uh, correctly in the back there of that site, but it'll get all those kills and just anchor up together, so very, very well done, uh, and now this is their first, the first that time they're able to play, at least a line on the scoreboard, one, two, four at a deficit for MXS, they still have this operator that they could work with, I don't think he got shot the previous round, so they still have an opportunity of an element of surprise, which is why you see here, Mata avoiding the radius of that knife, but still holds a tight angle to look down towards shot. TWT have Mata at the door with an op. Sniper, no. Close range, yes. Oh, just hard scoping around this corner. <laughs> oh, the X-ray. Oh, and there is just the forehead of Mame. Neural theft activated. Mata slipping up. And a chance for TWT off this cosmic divide to secure. And wow, and the Viper's Pit on top of that.
This is their site, and this is going to be such a tough retake for MXS unless they can get around it. Well, I don't have any more flashes, so they have to rely on Idiot. just bodies and crates. So far, that's four versus three, and MXS are picking off the players from the extremities. TWT have all these defenses. I mean, the cause with divide is gone, but can Pecky says I'm the only one that matters as long as this pit is up. The neural theft from Odashima is trying to flush out the rat from the sewer, and that is a big win out of MXS. Unless Odashima can defuse in time, should be good. Yeah. But wow, expensive round too. That was a huge round actually for Odashima. That that hat was everything to to spot Kempeki. Because at that them. point you had both snake fights getting ready to get dropped down towards the pulse plant, trying to play around that pit. And also you saw how passively Pancakes was playing. He had a star getting ready to go for a potential suck towards the end uh, and to, to be the guarantee uh, of that victory for TWT on that previous round. But it really came down to that last kill throwing the hat and that person falling down was pancake so i like that mxs were anticipating that the astro was hiding somewhere across uh the a site here and they are to punish her on that so very well done yes it was expensive but you still salvaged the round right you've won two rounds in a row you got economy to work with will trying to run the off on the attack against rocks off on the defense who also instantly pulls out a hunter fury that's going to hit these players they're pushing <laughs> Oh, the timing on the swing with Vic and Mata. It's two again for this Viper. An absolute menace. TWT, they've played in that a hallway before. And what a read out of Brock. If it wasn't going to be the op, it was going to be the Hunter's Fury. And it caught TWT in a corner. Now with only two remaining. One and the spike not in their hands. Kanpeki goes on a journey and comes out with nothing. So Mummy's gonna try and keep the weapon and wow. Even get some picks on some people who are getting a little greedy. Yeah, it's one HP though, and you got plenty of money for MXS. I love they're going on a hunt here. Mummy at least has a lot of util in his hand to try to stay alive, and there you go. Finally falls at 30 HP, but that was such a nice little change of pace for MXS, adding the aggression. So you saw together were terrific kind of playing the same type of default as if they were playing it on an anti-eco. Once again, getting pinged out, getting noticed out, and then what we decided to do for MXS instead, it was actually starting to push on those angles, two towards the halls, two towards A main, because they, they haven't been adding too much heavy pressure on the a main take uh, at least on the attack for twt so they realized here for mxs that they have an opportunity to really bring the aggression in their favor especially when mata got what punished early by mummy uh at the entrance of shops right when we talked about the line of sight that he had the the tapped on the orb yet he still wanted to swing out for a peek and um, when, when you're realizing at these moments that you could actually just pop flash a little bit deeper into shops because of the passive plays from TWT, then you, you definitely are able to capitalize on the punishment out of that one. So a very nice round. It, it, it was really a rough start to really kick things off in this series. And it's nice to see that instantly as we've got the 4-0 scoreline, MX has got a little bit more comfortable playing the defensive side, understanding that TWT are still very, very slow and meticulous on where they want to end up. So you're shutting down these portions of the map a lot faster on the defense and now twt they have to think differently and i think that's the reason of this timeout look at them all grouped up this time towards the b side a lower buy a half buy you could put that way as well so that we get ready to potentially just try to rush and get a plant towards the b site and Odashima used to be a coach, so the fact that MXS could read that TWT like to sit and spawn lean a hallway or just lean a in general MXS crunch them just shows the intelligence and the understanding of the game that MXS have. Now playing a pretty far back defense. TWG gonna dash in to B, switch things up, but Will just dies the spray through the smoke. There's actually so much visual clutter with the cages, with the Viper wall, and TWG, they don't all wanna funnel through inside of that wall. That is how Vic and Brock multi-killed them and killed that B offense for TWT last time. So TWT are trying to take their time with it, especially when, well, the most aggressive guy on the team is dead, AKA Will, but Pancakes on the flank and Flya ready to spot this out. Just and did, well, yeah. all of them are looking at him. Yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, that's that's a great call. Right now, they, they think they have a timing. Unfortunately, Odashima is still looking towards the nest and didn't put put into account Mummy that was actually pushing up towards the yellow. But they do have Pancakes pinned, which now gives a huge chance for MXS to just flood back into sight. All this time, TWT was just waiting for a plant because they think they had a timing on Pancakes' flank. Yeah, just hoping that the retake, you deal with the flanker, then retake is the equation simple enough. Mata, the cloud, cloud burst, or uh, the knives are out and gets two. And that makes sense with now four rounds in a row where the retake just looks so simple. It does look simple at that point, right? Like, like we like we just mentioned on that on that previous round, when it comes down to understanding that they consistently have this late lurk for TWT, and that might be the winning condition on how they want to play these pulse plants uh, for the attacking side. You saw MXS like it, if it was not Flyer that was watching it first, as far as spotted pancakes at the beginning at the end of holes then three guys turned over they didn't really care about what was happening towards the a site because they did the due diligence the person that was trying to create space inside the site was will dashing once again and unfortunately the the path that he chose when he lands he lands right into a trap so despite the visual <laughs> clutter inside the b site with all the cages it was just a free kill to spam on the trap kill that you just brought up on the defense so after that you don't you don't think there's going to be a lot of players that's going to try to push out towards arches or towards the back of the b site because they've lost their main uh entry fragger that is supposed to be uh creating that space behind the uh initial utility that it should be following behind him for him to get these picks so then it gives really a chance for mxs to take control of that defensive side uh the, and the, the defensive site to analyze and figure out where the lurk is coming from and then just be good in their retakes i mean they used a null command on top of that for the retake they use a blade storm and then they just overrun twt so uh, it's a, yeah. it's a beautiful display towards the end for MXS. It's like TWT kind of kind of played against the double controller in that setup of what you have the cages and the viper wall. Even though I know Oshima is in controller, but I felt like that. Mm. Now it's an early pit on the B site. TWT haven't really had success there, so they're they're okay being forced to go to A, but it's gonna just be a quiet default. But really pushed up there is Mame, so. Wondering who he can catch. Yeah, this is all just regular coordination right now on the attack. Smoke up the nest, try to walk down and take mid control. But I love this little gap. So this is again, we talk about that min maxing. You know how your opponent is played. There's a little gap in the smoke. You can watch towards the castle and potentially get the pick. Now you understand the timing. The smoke dissipated. Mata stuck in the corner, forced to peek out. Almost got punished, but manages to dash away into safety. They got info that Will was at that bottom mid. So there's a lot of pressure happening from TWT on that mid side. You know, one towards the tunnel. Ooh. And if Will is there, you know he's got friends too. Exactly. So TWT, their plan has been foiled. They are going to pivot towards A. MXS already have three bodies here at different angles too, but TWT have come out on top on these engagements before. Now up by one, full side control for TWT. As Pancake now has a duel against an up, and can Pecky can hold the door. The plant will ensue, so hopefully TWT can play off the advantage of time. Especially now that Neptune got a plant and a kill, so it allows for him to pop Null Command. Flashing towards the front, controlling the doors. Will Long Range gets a dink on the Brock. So this is very good for TWT to capitalize the pulse plant here. Oh, and they know where MXS, at least two of them are coming from. And Brock is quite low, needs Mata to be, to really go big. And Vic couldn't do anything on the flank and MXS miscoordinated on how to push that. And Brock will just try to conserve that op and TWT will bounce back after uh, MXS were starting to convert a lot around. Yeah, it really looks like when MXS are, are concentrating a lot on this middle hold holding double doors and whatnot and leaving a little bit less and more room to breathe for TBT on the a side entrance towards shops they're really getting uh, overwhelmed at that point you saw there was a little bit of a misstep from Oshima. one extra step on the left side of the pyramid got instantly punished and that really allowed for uh twt to really move in towards the mid doors because they opened the door they take control of the holes a lot on the defensive side uh, in these moments that TWT is able to capitalize on such a strong, heavy hit on the entrance of A-Site. There's a lot of, of good success that they're filing on 
pushing forward against our opponents on, uh, towards a shot because their trade capabilities are still very good for MXS. Uh, I feel that if you're giving that room a little bit more for TBT on that A side, then um, then it's easily punished. I think you have to maybe or think about playing a full retake at that point into the A side like you're doing towards B because that also works very well towards uh, for you if you're really adding that pressure on mid first. And TWT have just found more success going to A. It's just the way that they play around pyramids and the, the confidence that they have to swing around these pyramids. They know how to control their flanks. This, you know, it's been a bit more back and forth on how the whole hallway engagement goes. But so far, maybe TWT can just fall back on that. But so far, leaning towards B and even setting up their Viper wall there. Mm -hmm. See if that's for real, though. If anything, too, it's, uh, it's also on both mata and and will that, that really aren't really uh, that really aren't sorry finding success in their first shots on attempting getting operator Jackson, shots and whatnot and they have the perfect line they have the perfect read but unfortunately those guaranteed usually kills Jackson, at that level down. as a jet player should give your team a, a very early advantage and as you lose that shot then that's you know the time you lose on on reloading on falling back it's more space gain and more timing opportunities for dbt to really swarm towards the site i'm gonna try things differently this time pushing out towards b main they almost off. got a surprise there against mummy but he's the one that manages uh, that that limps away from that fight that's an early pick to a hallway there from odashima and although we're roasting Will, Mata also missed his off shot last well, round. That's what I meant. Which, yeah, that's oh, okay. I thought you were roasting line. Will. No, okay, no, got he, it. he's holding the line. He had the shot, and then he's just uh, yeah. It's like two or three opportunities that he had that he actually didn't get. So it really gives TWT an opportunity to take over and capitalize on that miss. That at least this time around they have the player advantage. So I like the push that they had towards Halls. Now they play the numbers. Mata is still holding one line here towards the mid double doors. He's being pinged out, or at least it, it pinged out Kempeki on that util being used, and now it forces TWT to push towards the B site. It's a lot of weight on Brock's shoulders. He's the only one on the side, and Vic tries to help him out. They both fall together. With TWT taking different angles this time. Going to mid. Still need to collect the spike, but you know, Kim Pecky has some work to do to cover their back. Yeah, now 11 exactly. seconds left. The plan will go down. Now Neuro Theft from Mame in the three versus two. Where is this op from Mata? It's coming from mid. Flya gets taken care of on the flank. That's three for Will this round. And TWT just have to close out. Yeah, especially when the camera sees Mata here. So switching out to the Vandal, unfortunately, cannot win that 1v1 against Kempeki. But again, that, that was another great example right there. Missing that shot on mid, it could have been a, a 2 versus 2. But then now instead, it becomes a 2 versus 3 because they lost a player on the execution from TBWT towards the B site, which then makes it a little bit harder for you to try to retake a site when you have an operator. And that kill also allowed the neural theft, uh, the neural theft sorry, from Mummy to pop and get information on the last two. So when Fire has a timing on the flank and he could actually deny a uh, play, then unfortunately the hat gives his position away and will just manages to win an easy one v one towards the end so that breaks the economy a little bit for mxs they're they're buying position. enough so they could buy into the last round except for mata that went into a force buy here uh but that that pressure and that double initiator utility that's being used towards the sands once again towards the entrance of the a site actually did get a lot of information once again Recon bolt by MXS just to sniff out of TWT are going through their A hallway shenanigans. We got a cosmic divide from pain, Pancakes, and the last time they did that was at A, and they even invested the Viper's Pit, and that ended up being a loss, surprisingly, from TWT. It's MXS. It was Odashima making the big plays with the neural theft, but TWT gonna have a slow, quiet default, but faster. look who's about to meet on the rope. It's Mata how far pushed up he is and he's been punished on this aggression before except sometimes where they've synced up on utility and mxs wiped the floor with twt in their spawn but how does twt react to mana being in this position well i guess they're just not gonna care because will opens up with a double kill hanging off the wall brock plays at the back of the site and has held his left. own now two Five kills down, for brock waiting for reinforcements they have arrived One it's a two versus eagle. three and twt just can't stop the man at the back it's brock now twt don't even have a spike anymore 
and also no more lives. Mana picks up the last kill as well. So opener and closer for last Mana on MXS and also two double entries for this. Will My when he actually gets two uh, yes. picks yes. dashing yes. in towards the B side. So now as we are hopper, harping on the Jets, they did a great job for both of these teams. I thought it was going to be, again, another one of those moments where MXS has first blood. They have player advantage and unfortunately just let that player advantage slip through their fingers on controlling mid or trying to hold back the attack on the B side. And there you go. Brock this time was ready on that type of hit that was coming through to avenge his teammates and really way. anchor down and not allow TWT to convert on the two first entries that will go. Finally, Mata gets friends and the flash is beautiful. Again. Mata try to slip into enemy lines. You got the Hunter's Fury corralling. TWT in spawn, it's Deja Vu, and the spike is One down. TWT remaining. trying to fight back, but it's just MXS that's on top, leaving Mame, who did not get an invite to the pain party, to roam around mid and see uh, how many kills he can get before going down. <laughs> TWT were like, hey, they're not going to do the same, stri the same strat twice when they have Hunter Sphere, right? Right? And then suddenly it just happens again, avoiding the radius of the knife, going for a pop flash, although some of them are suppressed, even being mana pushing through. They get these picks. Mummy's on a 1v3. It's going to be very difficult. Ah, He's even down to 27 HP, so that's uh, not going to allow for you to do anything right now for TBT to salvage that round. Very nicely done for MSS towards the end on that aggression fast. around the Hunter's Fury and dropping the spike. That's the second time to run the strat and the second time that they drop the spike and have full control of it at the entrance of the shops. So very nicely done. It ends up being a 6-6. We just have a clean slate going into the second half and it's as if like the first half never started, never happened. Now it's going to be <laughs> one of those important pistol rounds that MXS, once again, they lost this pistol against here. TWT on that first one. Another pistol round lost from last week till now you could put an 0-7 pretty much at this point so this is going to be a very important one for them on the attack side as they're uh, trying to maybe add a little bit of that pressure on the A side first but might be very similar to what TBT were currently doing just hold back wait to see where the pressure would be coming from try to work the mid take of the map and then try to figure out where you want to finish up on that last minute mark or the last minute oh. mark yeah. oh no it's a pistol round MXS shaking in their boots but hoping to stomp their way over to A, and it's a four stack from TWT. Flash. Only Mame on the other side. MXS dash in. Mata just already faking the plant, forcing a quick reaction out of TWT. As Ken Techie's trying to spray through the smoke. Will goes for the finish. The plant is down, but MXS are worse smoked off from their spike. So it was a bit of panic, but it allowed TWT to approach the doorway and force MXS into a small area. It's gonna be tough. They swing as the spike was tapped. And what a reaction. What manipulation from TWT to win that pistol. That was crazy and a nice little open to right will too. They engage really the retake that happened for TWT. You saw that there was so much pressure happening towards the A main that you had to use your snake bite at the entrance of the door instead of being able to use it for a pulse plant when all of them on this pulse plant were getting ready for shock darts and uh, and molly combat not even playing from the back lineups of the sand. But even if they did that, they had a late lurk and a late rotate all out from TWT as well from A kicks out towards A halls. From Meme still pushing down towards middle and they were winning all those fights too. So from A to Z, if the front side wasn't working, they had the back side to retake the site. And that was something that MXS seems like they weren't ready for. And that's another beautiful pistol by TWT. Unfortunately, another loss for MXS. <laughs> You know, pistols, just not their thing. But their thing is usually coming back a few rounds later. Anti-eco and man takes, takes, at least takes one for the road. All the action around that wall of B as MXS managed to clear it out. Now playing off the protection of their Viper wall and made able to get the plant down. Now Brock has been such a pillar at B so far. MXS watching every angle. Retake for TWT and trying to throw the flash in and 
I don't think MX just saw this coming. No, at all. And at first, it felt like TBT weren't ready for it as they had beautiful classic entries for MXS. They had an upgrade to a Spectre and a Bulldog. They had four positions at the same time and even playing towards Berlin. So yes, you were right. The call right there was to have some sort of contact for those four positions, hoping that it was going to be Will or something. Then you have a pop flash and you swing out from different angles at that point for, for Flya. But then unfortunately, you had players that got caught off guard. I think Backside and Berlin all died at once and it just didn't allow really for uh, MXS to set up on a post plant and TWT, they, they fought hard for it, but they got the retake. They still have a pretty decent bonus round going into this round here. Actually, maybe the bonus round is not that great. They, they're forced buying around this, right? They don't have too much economy to work with on the bank after this buy. So they have a good opportunity for MXS to really come back early in this game. Doing the same thing that MXS did on the defense, avoiding the KO radius, and then trying to pop right after that and get that pressure through towards Chop. But then they realized here that there was nothing happening towards the end. And makes sense to site to pull back and looks like they might try to re-hit later, uh, later on, sorry, towards this A site. Is everyone barking at each other on the other side of the Astra wall? No one wanted to cross it this time. Pancake says, bring it on, I gotta judge. And MXS will, uh, will feel that the hard way if they go over Going to down. B. Judge at that doorway is gonna be deadly. But MXS at least just throwing utility, trying to bait a, um, the A site hit. Even the orb may be tapped, but MXS hoping to get angles around TWT, who have three on the site, and Vic and friend take control of mid. Yeah. So the drone trying to find information. Beautiful knife is not going to give enough information here for MXS. They don't know players really are inside the site, but the pop flash is everything. Yeah, the pop flash and Mata cleaning things up. The janitor on duty, MXS. Take control of A. We've already sent Brock to do his job. Go plant and relax back there. Mame watching over like a bird on his perch. Waiting for pancakes to get in position from mid. It's going to be a tall task when MXS have double the numbers. This TWT not really feeling it, just able to get some weapon upgrades at least, and just gonna get exit frags, Yeah, if they can. Even Mata heard the uh, weapon switch uh, just at under him when he was actually trying to push up towards the hall, so he knows that there was potentially somebody that was gonna watch for the exits from the bottom middle, so MXS is ready for that. They're grouping up together. They're recon darting at the same time just to make sure they clear that corner and now working as a group. You can definitely see here that, you know, you, you can't really chase down those kills because it was an expensive buy that you have in this round as well for your gun round for MXS. So I like that all of them stay into a stalemate. There's a chance to really no worries, breathe here for no TVT, worries. maybe utilize the Vandal that was picked up from that previous round and maybe buy around it too, right? This is yes. going to be uh, a very important decision to make for TBT if you want to uh, if you want to force through that and even if you lose that round you still have a chance to come back in the game right because it's we're still very early into the second half it's only an eight to seven score line so going for a gamble with a buy is not too bad of a thing especially here at this point they juggled the vandal over to will will went for uh, armor and everything as well if he could get one pick and die that's blade storm as well to work in within the next round so i like that you're trying to maximize what you have even though at a disadvantage here for TBT to try to get the best out of it yeah i was wondering if will, will was gonna get a weapon or was just like you said gonna work towards the blade storm and that could be the ultimate weapon but twt just went peeking at a main didn't really see much you know the astra stars covering that up so mxs went a really slow and quiet default having odashima pushed up around b but mxs have had success at a before See if they'll be able to get the orb, which will give either null command to Flya. Yeah, that, that was the plan. Yeah, staying very quiet actually around for, for MXS. We're at the minute mark. We're trying to figure out what type of U is going to be coming out to. If they're going to try to throw another cycle of a knife, Neptune's about to throw his, and it just went out towards a main. And look at that instant pivot from MX MXS. Okay, the knife didn't hit anybody. They probably were going to try to gamble towards a B side rotate. Let's pivot back towards the A side and try to go for a hit. But I love this forward push from Neptune left. right after. I thought it was going to keep pushing down towards holes and get more information there. But this still is a great opportunity for a backstab after. Okay. Oh, oh Neptune went check in, found out the wrong way. <laughs> Heard someone talking, wanted to hear what was up. But MXS 
What is up? This is Spike being planted at A. And already Mata in a forward position. Eyes on the A hallway. TWT even Enemy tagged. maybe getting spotted. At least Will gets spotted by the Owl Drone. Now Will is just going to bounce away. You thought A hallway was all... I mean, controlled by TWT, but can Pecky pushed up, got picked, because Vic is playing in spawn. So MX is a force TWT to just conserve their guns, because when, when routes are this close, economy is everything. But that's it. Trying to min-max whatever you had in terms of, you know, the, the situation you're facing in that round number 16 for TWT. You had a lower buy. You Johnson's only had a sheriff in the hands of Neptune. You're trying to at least have a perfect Johnson's read to down. bring those rifles in favor of the other four players and, and try to catch some players off guard. But again, it was a nice little over, well, from an overthinking from TWT with the knife that was thrown out towards A main, became a great read for MXS to push towards that A site, move in towards an open A site and not give a chance for really TWT to set up on a retake when you have all these positions that are a lot more clean on the pulse plan for MXS on the A side on uh, on attack than it was for their positioning on defense on the A side. So now we have a tie game 8-8. Eight to eight. Uh, We are still trying to buy around what we currently saved on that previous round. So when uh, a marshal comes out for Kimpeki, they still have these free rifles and they're looking at the pressure now. Working down towards the middle, Will avoids the recon guard, also move down towards Castle. And this gives a chance for a pop flash later on for mid if they need it here on the crossfire setup from Neptune. There's the camera from Odashima spotting anyone that's going near B, who is going through mid. But Spike has been left behind by MXS. Aldrin to check out A main, and then you got Mata almost in the defender's spawn, but as a tripwire that will wait for the perfect timing before crossing that, or at least makes it look like he's not there. Now takes care of the trip, gets the attention. And Vic strikes, catching Will, who is hanging out on the other side of his wall, and Neptune doesn't know how to handle that, but at least Kanpeki trades in that moment. Still not a favorable round for TWT, as MXS have a lot of options. All the kills only happened at mid, as MXS gonna cut off those A rotators and see what they can do at B as Mata will gatekeep. Yeah, and Mame, I mean, we mentioned and praised how he's good 30 on this seconds map left. as a cypher, about to get contested towards B. Oh, rushing in. Few walls, few smokes, and MX has nothing to deal with. But somebody must have put this down. Spray through the wall, hope for the best, and Mummy hope that those shots were not going to hit him that time. Fly it, plant. Just the seconds dwindle away. TWT. They usually like to conserve their, their guns in positions like this. At least Pancakes would like to, but making their way slowly towards B. Kanpeki is getting pushed by two people, making a lot of noise, and Kanpeki don't want that smoke. They're at half health. Let's see if they can take one to the grave with them, holding this angle. Uh, Mata knows exactly where they are, and Kanpeki has a lineup. Playa, early shots. Uh, one playing enemy a bit remaining. scared, and Kanpeki gets found at the end of the day, and Pancakes will keep their gun, like I said. Yeah. I feel that there's almost two small mistakes that happened in that round for TWT uh, in order for them to, to lose that control that they had very early and towards the end. The first one being, you know, you, you already have pancakes on the top at Nest watching the elbow. So that 1v1 against Odashima's Lurk was already locked down. So really, the only thing you have to focus on is top of castle and down towards bottom doors. And Will kept looking up towards that area, but that one time he decides to walk forward for some whatever reason it was uh, because, you know, Neptune should have been the contact already at mid double doors. He gets caught then right after by Vig's jump on the top of the box as that castle and gets dropped. So that that already initiated everything in terms of how they weren't able to hold the mid take in the end for again the aggressive position that he held out for TWT. Secondly, when Mummy was actually uh, about to break here, so he walks for for some odd reason, decides to walk back and then gets caught because the the one moment that he doesn't walk out of the castle, he gets picked off. But but then the other one for TWT for for Mummy that's inside the site he's up uh, he's about to play against four players entering towards that site and you know pancakes was trying to mean well i guess by throwing that smoke down towards the left side of the ladder but that hallway is so tight that three players spamming through that smoke is going to be 
definitely way better than the single mummy spraying with a vandal on his end so he got swarmed over that and couldn't anchor or, or get his one or two and done that he's actually really good for in these moments uh so uh you know two two great errors that were capitalized by mxs to take the lead now in this game forcing the timeout of twt and have to react a little bit more you saw that uh tony that um mummy was very very vocal uh, on camera during that timeout so they're trying to figure something else with this with this gun by that they have again another solo hold towards the b site and more pressure towards a no command from neptune but four stacked at a mxs making their way towards b Lucky shock bolts there to clear these corners as best as possible. As Mata up and above and on top of the wall and trying to discover where these site holders are. Mummy will be nowhere to be found. It's gonna respect that play for the retake with the rest of the reinforcements of TWT. We're all just gonna funnel through one side. No mid flips. Maybe for something like pancakes. He's thinking about it though, but TWT don't want to waste any time. The Viper Wall comes down and so just the flash, I think, from Neptune. And it goes one back and forth. MXS have set their eyes on one doorway and just pulled down all the pins of TWT's right retake. And pancakes is the last survivor, no longer that three for Vic that round. He has been so consistent at the B side. Yeah, I'm just before the engagement, yes, it was a nice splash that came out from Neptune through that wall, and even the wall came down. That surprised, I think it was Mata on the top of the back site there. And as he falls back, uh, I, I, I like to think that they're the... The concussion that was real that was used by pancakes was a little bit too early because nobody is really ready to run behind the ko alt to really try to fight back against uh the players on, I'll the, find on the back lines of mxs on the pulse line so it was a little bit of uh miss comms i would like to guess miss in terms of util that they wanted to use and it just allowed better crossfire setups and better trades here for mxs in the end uh, that's unfortunate at that point but now Poison it's off. um it's going to be MXS taking the lead by two, and finally the economy is broken here for TWT. Yes, they'll have a Blade Storm for Will, trying to leverage that towards potential 1v1 on, on that elbow to start, but now he's pivoting back towards A holes to really help his team. And finally, this is one of those rare moments that we finally have a, an anti-jet uh, anti updraft drip uh, from the defenders, but uh, Mummy only has a Sheriff to work with, right? So that's going to be very difficult to play close range with that too. And Mata just gave the op to Brock. And he says, hold this. I'm going in. I'm going in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to end, is what I would say. But MXS starting their setup around B, around that box, too. It's Odashima and Mame. You can see that hat anywhere. He's got the same one. Mame gets to upgrade his weapon in that case. Oh, MXS damn. still managing to plant and pick. Toxins Watching over down. mid. Great pick on the mummy too. Waiting for help. And Will popping the blade storm is at the back, but no one's really Lucky peeking him, so he's gonna dash in. Down. He's got Neptune who uh, was about to help out, maybe with a flash, maybe as bait, and that's not a good sign for Will. Yeah. A shorty to work with. Very nice adaptation for MSS towards the end and want to make sure that they salvage these rounds, especially when, you know, it seems like Odorus or Odoshima has been working out. So that's why, like, his arms are sticking out because they're so huge. And Mummy gets a free kill. Uh, but nonetheless, despite that, you still scramble around and try to get these rounds. So you got the hat, you know, you, you, they, they had all the information against you to close in right after. And I love that you popped an all come in after that to just stop really any type of bleeding that started from the initial engagement from dwt now we finally have off on both sides brock has it on the attack will has it on the defense and he's actually set up for mid control changing gears initiating and engaging towards the east like yeah this is a fast hit out of mxs mata is wasting no time got eyes on the door if dive and dodge at least goes one for one as mxs still have some worries but twt world. at the back especially will as the off but now that mxs work. have established a big on the site like landed this viper's pit is i know huge. exactly TWT where you are. can try to take angles and pound it but it's difficult look who's lurking it's otashima also in a hallway it's gonna be such a tough round for twt all the wind in the sails of mxs who were five rounds in a row in this half 
few rounds away from taking the first map, but TWT. One enemy remaining. Just going toe to toe and MXS. I've already done all the work, including Onishima at this A hallway. Hey, exactly, including Onishima, Match that was point. also the nail in the coffin pretty much for the, out, uh, the okay. outcome rather of PWT on the defensive side because he's moving up towards a halls he gets the hat out he gets information right there and there's really nothing that he could do towards the end to try to retake that side so that change of pace that's the first time really that mxs just decide to to really brute force themselves inside the a site at the beginning and looks like TWT wasn't ready for engage. that right there's Weapons been a little bit less of uh, extremity control from TWT in terms of aggression so more in the middle at first really trying to fight against the defaulting of MXS and I love that you have this small change of pace in those in these moments that really count because now MXS despite them losing two pistols they're at map point now I think TWT pinged something in a hallway, so early Viper's pit from Kanpeki to deny that out from MXS. One round away from taking the map. And it's their map pick too. Neptune holds close at A. MXS stomping away. Maybe Neptune hears it, but that Viper's pit will hold. But how long is, will someone like Mame and Can uh, and Pancakes hold at B? Which is good, right? That, that pit is also to just deny the amount of times that they were able to lurk on the attack for MXS. They have a trip down at the bottom doors, so the two players on the east side can just focus on holding the A main. But as you mentioned, what's really happening on the B side? You have the initiator and also the cypher moving towards the area. You're trying to pull and force rotates towards the end, but really, you're just counting on pancakes to uh, solo anchor hold around the trip set up here by Mummy, while his responsibility is to watch spawn side very 30 passively. seconds so left. You're not aggressing too much. You're playing time in your favor on defense but you hope that the util that's been placed here on the defense is good enough Lucky for the sight. players to set up on the anchor hold. Oh. Such an awkward oh. time with that Viper bubble coming up and Spike MXS down just getting mowed a. down. It was just an interesting call and unlucky timing. Left. Mata just clipped. Their wings are clipped. As soon as they dash in, the rest were like, oh, I guess we might as well go. Mata started it. And now that'll be the surviving round out of TWT. But MXS were just that close from closing it out. Yeah, we didn't see that last shot, but when I heard that one shot and then I saw a headshot on top right, I knew that shot was clean because he had to be quick and adapt <laughs> really quickly on the on the shot there for Will, which also puts him at top of the scoreboard now uh, with these last three kills. But that first pick, and again, beautiful uh, as to why you stand after in the composition. That such vulnerable two players. It was easy kills there for Neptune That's on top of the K on, uh, from the orb. That was everything there for uh, TBT to just anchor down towards this A site. And now they realize it for, for MXS. They're like, oh, geez, let's just last again because they're not ready for it. So this I'll time, we just close the map. Spike down right, A. No traps in their way this time. Well, as maybe Fly wanted to come out and flush something. He's down, but MXS haven't given up hope yet. Mata waits for the Viper Ball to drop his shoes on the other side. MXS converge, hopefully on the right with Mata, but now their focus is on that A hallway door and hearing Kentucky run around. Now the Blade Storm is popped out of Mata. And TWT are at the back of their site. Just playing for the retake, I guess. But Neptune lurking around one of the pyramids. Mata watches the flank. TWT have rifles. Even a knife out of Neptune. And well, they get surprised by Mata, who climbs through this round, hoping to set up at MXS for match Remain point and Neptune. map win. But Attackers it's win. With the finishes and MXS with the win. That ends up being too clean for MXS in that last round. We mentioned it, right? They wanted to play slow on the previous round. They got owned by Util. They were rushed into executing towards the A site. They realized the round before that they could just rush into site. They'll do it again in this round here. And that was just beautifully done by Mata on the amount of space that he was able to get on getting the space and two kills on top of that to just allow MXS to have an easy, easy pulse plan to close the map. Yeah, it was uh, back and forth. I mean, the first half was 6-6 six, six, and we, we were kind of hinting Moist look or Moist Shopify look like a beatable team. And when it went that close in the half, you were starting to worry. Will that perfect streak uh, be ended? But what we liked nope. about Moist Shopify, <laughs> uh, nope, not to, not yet anyway. <laughs> but uh, the adaptations that a Moist Shopify, the way they can read the game and how they adapt on the fly is what gave them that creativity edge at the end. But 
We're on the edge of maybe the end of our series. It is series point favor Moy Shopify. We're gonna throw it to a quick break. When we get back, we'll have map two. Tell me what the call out is, and then tell me if you had to rename it, what you would rename it. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, we call it Sabrosa. Sabrosa. Everyone ever calls it Sabrosa. Sabrosa. It's Sabrosa. It's always going to be Sabrosa. Call that Sabrosa. Everybody calls it Sabrosa. We keep it Sabrosa as well. I feel like you earned that one. Yeah, I just wonder what you'd rename it to, right? Maybe I'd just call it Dirt if we weren't going to use Sabrosa. Oh, we call it Rosa. Only like Elbow or L. L would make sense to me. Uh, um, if I had to rename this, though, maybe like, maybe like, maybe like Grass. Other people, if they don't call it Sabrosa, they call it library. My team calls this Sabrosa. That's Sabrosa. I don't think anyone could change that from him. Uh, it's such an iconic spot. I can't rename this. No, I was there. That was my boy. I'm in the clip. If you watch the clip, I'm in the clip right there. This call out gets tough. If you were to hop into ranked game today, this is called back right sight. Dude, I'm not gonna lie. I think we just call it jump up. Just strikes me as like a Roger. I think this is called danger for us. We just say back triple. Okay, or double doors, either one. We call this dark. I like to call it danger. I think hell is the best call out for this because it's just like right under heaven. Uh, my team, we call this whippy. Every time I play C9, it's the only position he plays. Back sight for us. But if we rename that barrel, I think we used to call this like emo. Probably uh, rename another bucket. Yeah. Definitely should call this like barrel. I don't know. I would probably rename this like trash can or something. Oh. Okay, we call this ladder. Ladder. The ladder. It's called ladder. Maybe like petals, like the little, like the little flowers there. Yeah, this is ladder. Call that spot ladder right now. Maybe we rename it jump up. The little jump up box that people peek on. I call this ladder. I think we call this ladder. And if it wasn't called ladder, I would call it flower. Oh yeah, this is ladder. Yeah, everyone calls it ladder, a little ladder right there. Nothing else to it. There's certain spots that are really unpredictable is those type of spots is where we figure out call outs for it. Everyone calls it ladder on the back left and then on the back right is quad. Nah, I, maybe, maybe we call it Nasi because he gets three Ks from this spot nonstop. Every team has something different for this one. We call it ladder. I've heard some people call this jump up now because of that box. Ivy, I've heard Ivy. I'm gonna go Ivy, I like Ivy. It's a cool name. We call this ladder. I play here a lot as a cypher rat, Ivy. Another good call out for this. I like Ivy. Uh, yeah, everybody goes this ladder. I mean, I gotta call it ladder. Uh, yeah, I would say this one's pretty easy. This is ladder.
Peace.